Did you ever spar Hugh Russell prior to your two great fights with him? Only in the Holy... Hugh Russell used to chase me around in the Holy Family Boxing Club when he was only a kid. He was only a bit up to there, up right. to my, up above my he waist. He a grasshopper. He had to chase me around to warm me up right. in, in the Holy right, Family. Right. Oh, right. And Hugh had came along and he had won the uh, bronze medal in Olympics, etc. And uh, he was going well. And I, I thought eventually... That uh, you and I's path would would clash, clash you know. Whether I was, I had no intention of packing the game in. It was still fresh, and uh, consequently, Hugh got a crack at the British title and beat John Feeney on a thirteen round disqualification. Right, yeah. Prior to that, I had fought. Uh, can't remember the guy I fought in the Ulster Hall, and he was giving me a. Mother and father of a Hayden for six rounds, right. and I knocked them out and uh, stopped them in the six, six round. And uh, well, BJs we got in and said if Hugh won the British title, I would be his first defence. Right. I right. think he regretted that. No. <laughs> well, listen, no. how did you see you sparred McGuigan? I used to spar McGuigan regularly. Yeah. I remember one one fight sparring McGuigan. Uh, we just finished sparring, and I had a fight on Friday night in Paris and the fight was called off Right. and BJ Eastwood offered me a fight in the Albert Hall London against a guy called Ava the Engine Jones oh, yeah, right. yep. remember him and Ava the Engine was managed by Mickey Duff who was grooming him to become a future British champion and uh, I didn't at first I didn't want the fight because it was bounced on me within a a day and I spoke to Paddy Maguire my trainer about it and Paddy says well why don't you why do you not want to take it and I says ah, I just, you like to condition yourself and who you're fighting getting prepared and Paddy says to me but you you're boxing you and McGuigan is knocking hell bells out of Aye. each other you're fit as a fiddle why well, not he, well, he, now he tore them he went, he'd have torn into me because I was yeah. a lightweight but he, he wouldn't have went 100% you, you were a bantamweight he wouldn't have <laughs> and he, McGuigan he, didn't know how to take it easy uh, but let me put it like it wasn't the first time I hit the floor with McGuigan oh, yeah, well, you know. I'll, I'll tell you what, about one of my big experiences with Barry the first time I was ever, the first time I ever sparred him was in 1985 he was mm-hmm. world champion yeah. and I was still an amateur and Bobby McAllister brought me down from the Holy Family the Eastwoods to spar him yeah. first time ever in Eastwoods and Bobby failed to tell me something very very significant Bobby should have told me that, that when, when that buzzer sounds that indicates that there's 10 seconds to go and you fight through that buzzer yeah. so at the end of the first round the buzzer went I put my hands down McGuigan came over yeah. the top hit me flush yeah. it didn't go, my, my legs didn't go beneath me or anything but I fell back in the ropes and he put his hands on my shoulders and he says you're alright yeah. well, and Barry, you know what Barry did he want me to say not so bad and hard yourself Barry I, was I seen five of them well, Barry was a very damaging body puncher, and he caught me one in the small rib right. and buckled me in two. Right. And uh, as I say, you learn. Once you get hit once with one of those punches, you don't get hit the second time uh, just as easy, you know? Well, I got my revenge against him. Uh, years later, uh, in 1983, up at Turf Lodge Holy Trinity Gym, he was holding the pods for me. Yeah. And I accidentally missed the pods and caught him. Yeah. Now, he says <laughs> I was extracting revenge from me. Yeah, he, yeah. he says, you've still held that against me. Well, Paddy, but honestly, Paddy uh, Maguire does this, the same thing with me. Paddy was taking me in the pods in the Albert Foundry gym one night. And I was doing the combination punches, left, right, left, right, and stuff like that there. And by accident, Paddy moved the wrong direction. And I went straight through the pods and hit him in the chest. And he just... Bang! Fell on his back. Right. I'll not tell you what he called me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. talk to me about uh, your first fight with Hugh Russell. It was a final eliminator for the British title. By right. that stage, you were seen from f- I would from Barney Eastwood's perspective as maybe been on the slate. Yeah. Pretty old. This yeah. was a handy fight for Hugh. Yeah. Well, I I had already fought a, a final eliminator with Dave Smith and the Elephant and Castle in London. He beat me in points. I'd already. Fought another final limiter in the the Ulster Hall and I'd beat him, uh, and that was actually a week after my father had died, and Shu w- and I were set up as the final eliminator, and that night in the Ulster Hall, I did not make no excuses. Why I was as fit as ever it was, but on the uh, I think it was the tenth round, I'm not sure, it was the eighth round, 
I suffered a bad cut over one of my eyes and the blood poured out of me. And uh, to the extent the fight went to a points decision, Shu got the decision in the points. It was a hard fight for me. It, it, was, fight, a, it was a hard fight. fight, a hard fight. I, I have very little recollection of the fight except the blood pouring out of my eyes. Right. But the referee was a guy called Mike Jacobs. And Mike actually, there's a photograph not going to put I have it at home even uh, where Mike holding the two of us apart and his dinner sh- shirt is covered in blood now the story is Mike went and left the shirt to the dry cleaners and when he came to retrieve it the police arrested him <laughs> and wanted to know how he got the blood on wow. the shirt that's amazing you know so he had to the board of control had the right get him off the hook there, you know. So Russell went on and he beat Feeney by disqualification yep. in the 13th round. Uh, the fight was pretty close up until then. But it was announced at ringside, you fought in the undercard that night, and it was announced yep. at ringside that Hugh Russell would make his first defence against Davey That's Yonder. right, that's right. And uh, so we're on to the second fight. Uh, what did you do in the second fight that you didn't do in the first fight? The second fight, uh, I remember Eddie, Eddie uh, Shaw getting in for, interviewed on television and asked had he changed anything with Shu regarding the first fight. And he, his words was uh, they'd only changed tactical things. He'd only tactics he changed. But that fight, for me, I remember Freddie Gilroy driving up Hopewell Street when I was a kid about six year old and tapping me on the head and all the neighbours were out, all the old women at the doors and all and I kept on shouting to my mum, that's Freddie Gilroy, that's Freddie Gilroy, she didn't know who Freddie Gilroy was but I knew at that time starting off boxing and a Lonsdale belt was the only thing achievable really in those days uh, you had two versions of a world title absolutely no chance of coming from Britain getting a crack at a world right. title. The Americans had it sewed up. Right. Uh, so the Lonsdale belt of the British title was really the only thing achievable. possibly achievable. Yeah. And at that night... Uh, March the 2nd, 1983. Yep. Well, and when it was I, the first all-bell fast battle since Gilroy and Caldwell. That's correct. Double L from Russell getting himself out of trouble as the cut opens up a little bit and Russell was caught with that one. He was caught with the right hand. Harry Gibbs is giving him the count. The right hand then from Davy Larmer. Up he gets. Up Russell gets the champion down. Into the final half minute. And Russell holding on desperately as Larmer tries to finish this. Russell dreadfully badly cut by underneath the right eye. Which came from that hand of Davy Larmer. The left eye of Russell it is. The left eye of Russell. Coming up in the last 10 seconds of the fifth round, and have we got a fight here? Well, Lara coming forward, trying to stop that. They're both bleeding. What a round that was. And for the second time in the fight, and definitely much more decisive this time, Hugh Russell caught a terrific... And Hugh Russell content now to hold on. David Lara, purposeful. Determined. Seems to be Larmer, Larmer, and perhaps that's the way the fight's going. Larmer now swinging that left hand, and again the right, but Russell just moving inside him and absorbing the punch. Thank you. 